this video is just a very fast, quick tip to maybe help out somebody else that's wrestling with the same problem. About four or five months ago, my spindle that came with the 6040 CNC, the cooling was blocked up and I wasn't getting much cooling through here and that's something I'm going to work on to see if I can blast out those channels. But in the meantime, I ordered a replacement spindle. I figured it would be good to have one on hand in any event. So I put the spindle on and then I had an order for some signs, actually some, uh, some signs for a club that I belong to. And I ordered some color core material. I've never used this before. It was really expensive, but a lot of people have really good results with it. So I picked up some of this stuff and figured it would be an easy project. And it drove me nuts. And these were the results I was getting. I was just tearing up stuff left and right. I've been playing around with CNC's for years and a lot of different machines and this I couldn't figure out what was going on. I tried different feeds and speeds. I researched end mills and bought several very expensive end mills and I was still getting this disastrous result of just this frayed stuff. And then this past week or so for a workshop project I cut out some plywood and as the CNC was cutting out the shape it was looking like it was burning the material. We had so much smoke that was coming out I thought it was going to catch on fire. And again I played with the feeds and speeds and could not figure out what the issue was. So late last night I was poking around some more online and I found this one little note by one poster maybe eight or nine years ago. And what this one post said was, he found out that his spindle was wired backwards. <laughs> and then it clicked in my mind and it made sense. And it was really interesting because after all the searching and all the results, everybody kept telling me to change my feed, change my speed, change my end mill, change all this other stuff. And there was no suggestion or no comment that maybe it was a spindle issue. And perhaps it's a really rare thing because this spindle was supposed to be just a swap in. And it did fit and everything, but somewhere along the line, it was wired backwards. So the end mill was going counterclockwise instead of clockwise. So the original one here, you can see the arrow, it's supposed to go clockwise. This one, I don't see an arrow on here, but when I did a test, it was certainly going the wrong way. So to fix that, there are several ways you can do that. This thing is way out of warranty, so I can't get the seller to, to replace it. So you can either switch the wires in the controller in the plug here, or you can go into the VFD and switch it. And actually going into the controller could not have been easier. What I did was, and this was late last night, I did not take pictures of it, I just unscrewed the bottom, dropped the bottom out, found out where the spindle connected to the board, to the integrated circuit board, and then there are two wires. There's a red wire and a black wire and actually a green wire for a ground. And what I did was I just flipped, I did unscrewed the little screws and flipped the red and the black. And then all of a sudden, everything's fine. And I did a quick test this morning, and this is just stock settings. I didn't play with anything. This is just straight out of the recommended numbers in Cut 2D that I've used for stuff for years. And these are gorgeous. They're as clean as they can be. <laughs> so, just a tip, just a suggestion. If you find yourself in a similar situation and you're getting this horrible stuff and it looks like you're burning everything that you're cutting yes it could be an end mill that is not sharp yes your feeds and speeds could be wrong but if nothing else is changing and nothing else is making sense check to see which direction your spindle is turning because it should be going clockwise so there you go thanks for staying in for this this is not the most exciting video but I didn't find anything on YouTube that talked about this. And maybe this will help somebody out down, else down the line. Once we get more of the stuff in the shop set up, I've got several videos of setting up my outside workshop. Then eventually we'll get the CNC's and the laser engraver and all this stuff out there and get back to some really cool stuff too.
So, thanks very much for taking a look, and hopefully this helps out somebody else. Thank you.